If you are a Mac or iPhone or Apple enthusiast in general, there's one app you need to have on your phone. I'll tell you what it is. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery, and today I'm going to tell you about an app that if you don't already have, you should download right away and keep it with you at all times. You could keep it on your phone, keep it in your pocket at all times, especially if you're a Mac enthusiast. If you like buying old MacBooks, finding them either in pawn shops or finding them on Marketplace and fixing them up or just using them for yourself, this, uh, this one app is going to give you all the information you need to know about each Mac and what it's got inside it. So the app that we are talking about is called Mac Tracker, and it looks like it's by a developer named Ian Page. It's completely free. I've been using it for probably for years and years and years, maybe even 10 years. It's available on the iOS app store for iPhone and, and for iPad. It's also available on the Mac store, so you can download that as a desktop app also. But we're going to jump into this. I'm going to show you some of the stuff that it can do and some of the information that it has in it and let's check it out now. So here is the app itself. This is Mac Tracker, and it's a very simple design, very effective design. Uh, no frills, but, but that's exactly what we need. And it's using the old, like, list view, iOS development, list view UI, but it's perfect. So we see a couple categories here, desktop, notebooks, servers, other devices like your iPhones, your iPads, and some other different devices, and then the software down at the bottom. So let's take a look at what we might want to look up. Maybe I found this iPad Pro here, this 2012 iPad Pro at a pawn shop, and I want to see what it's worth, what, it, what it's got inside it, what the specs are, what some of the options are, and maybe what it originally sold for. So let's go ahead and find notebooks. We're going to click on MacBook Pro, and you can see it's got them all the way back to 2006. So we're going to scroll down until we find this, in this case, 13-inch mid-2012. So we click on that. It tells us when it was introduced, when it was discontinued, what the Mac identifier is. That's that's very helpful sometimes. Uh, model numbers, and you can use this to kind of double check up against the device to make sure it matches. It's got some of these ordered numbers that have the different options. So sometimes you'll find these listed in the in the specs or on the uh, information sheet in Mac, and you'll see what options they were. What they originally sold for, I like to always see that to see what the difference in price was between, this is probably like the i5 version and the i7 version, what the original price was. And then as we scroll down, we can see what processor is on it, what the processor options were. There's the i5 and the i7, what the Intel numbers were for them, what the uh, processor speed is and what the boost speed is, what the architecture is. Here's some benchmarks. So you can use this benchmark information to kind of compare this one up against maybe a different model to see which one's faster. And it's always got the single core and the multi-core speed. What some of the storage options were. Uh, trackpad keyboard. Here's an important one here. The original OS that it shipped with and what the maximum OS you can upgrade to. So you know exactly which upgrade, which uh, Mac OS it's going to upgrade to. Now if it was a newer one, it would say current Mac, uh, Mac OS. In this case, it stops at 10.15.7. And then some other stuff like the memory, what was, what was built in, what the maximum was, what kind of memory slots they have, what the resolutions were, what your display was. Sometimes there's multiple different displays that you could choose from, like the glossy and the non-glossy. So it has the different resolutions that are native to it. What the graphics card is how much graphics memory, what some of your ports are for your, for your graphics connections, some of the other information like the Wi-Fi specs, Bluetooth, Ethernet, all the different ports that are on there, any kind of slots, the interface for your hard drive and your optical drive, and then uh, just some other information like the battery life, uh, what the expectancy is, how many maximum battery cycles you can expect on that so when you buy the or when you're looking in the uh, the settings you can see what the what the battery cycle count is and you can kind of judge how much life it's got left in it what kind of uh, 
power adapter it uses, in this case the MagSafe. And then just some other neat nifty stuff like the tagline when they first announced it was going to be sold, what, what the tagline was. So a lot of information, and this is all just about one device. So let's take a look at a couple other things. So let's say we were scrolling through here, and we did see that maximum OS here of 10.15.7, and we didn't remember what that was. So let's go ahead and hit back, and go back all the way to the main screen, and let's scroll down to our software, and now let's click on Mac OS. So here's all the Mac OS's starting all the way back in 1999. So we can scroll down these and see that 10.15 was Catalina. So I know that this particular model laptop will upgrade all the way up to Catalina. So that's, that's some good information if you don't have all these different names memorized. So that's under software and under Mac OS. So let's take a look at something different. Maybe we're looking at iPhones and we're looking for what the storage options are on maybe a, a iPhone 12. So we find our iPhone 12 here and we can see the different model numbers and sometimes these are all going to change depending on where it was made and what the what the uh, carrier was. But we can see the initial price here shows a 64, a 128, and a 256 gig option. So if we were looking for a new iPhone or maybe an upgrade for our iPhone and maybe our carrier was offering us an iPhone 12, then we'd know that the max we could get is 256. If that's not going to be good enough for us, we might have to look at a like a Pro or Pro Max. And then we can see we can get up to 512. And we see the different prices there to see what the, the different prices for the different levels were. So if you're looking at something current and you can get to those real easy at the very top of the app, under current models. It's going to show you all the current models and, and the, the developer does update this pretty often. He's not going to update it maybe as soon as the newest thing drops, um, but you can actually see here in this case at this time we're looking at the M1 and the M2 MacBook Airs, so it is pretty much up to date. But if we want to see the current models we can see all the different current models here including even our iPads and our iPhones and now we can see even the watches down here at the bottom. So again, lots of information, all at your fingertips, literally. And, and like I said, I use this all the time. Anytime someone asks me something like, hey, how much memory can I upgrade my 2010 MacBook Pro? Well, I just go to MacBook Pro, find their 2010, let's say they had a 15 inch, and then we'll scroll down to memory, And here it tells me that there's two memory slots and the maximum memory is eight gigabytes. So I can put two four gig of this PC3 8500, which is a, a 1066 megahertz RAM. So I know where to go. I can go to Amazon, search for this type of memory, grab a two by four kit and max that thing out. Now, sometimes if you look at maybe some of the, the more recent ones, you'll see that there's a difference between the maximum memory, what Apple said, in this case, eight gigabytes, and the actual 16 gigabytes. So you know in this channel, we've taken these 2011 and 2012 MacBooks and upgraded the memory all the way up to 16 gigs. I believe that this, this is only saying that Apple supported eight gigabytes because at the time that they made this, that's probably the biggest modules you could buy. Now we can buy eight gig modules throw two of them in there and get it up to 16. So again, very handy to find out what it is that you can upgrade to and just a ton of information. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. Uh, just short and sweet. I just wanted to show you my secret weapon that I carry with me at all times. Just an absolute butt ton of information about MacBooks, Macs, iMacs, iPads, iPhones, everything. And it's free. Keep it on your device. Update it when they get an update and you'll always have the latest information at your fingertips. So hopefully this helped you out. If it did, go ahead and drop your phone and give me a thumbs up. If you like this type of content, if you're a Mac enthusiast or you like geeky stuff in general, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And thank you as always for watching. Until next time, peace out and geek out.